Welcome to Fossil Fundamentals, where we unearth the secrets of the fossil world. Today we will be diving deep into the science behind how the remains of life are preserved, and how they provide us with a glimpse into the Earth's past. So, grab your virtual rock hammer and let's embark on this journey to the past. Welcome to Episode 3 of our ongoing series, Fossil Fundamentals. Today, we delve into the fascinating process of fossilization. Before we embark on this journey, let's first understand what fossilization is. It is the process of preserving the remains or traces of animals, plants and other organisms that lived a long, long time ago. A time so remote that it's hard to fathom. We're talking about imprints of life that flourished millions of years before us, captured and immortalized in the fabric of the Earth. This process is fossilization, a type of time capsule that holds the secrets of life from ages past a window into the world as it was millions of years ago. It's a story of endurance, of how life leaves its mark and stands the test of time. Understanding fossilization is key to unlocking the secrets of Earth's ancient past. During our journey, we will be discussing the many types of fossilization one by one. So let's get started. Let's start with our first chapter, permineralization, a process as intricate as it sounds. This fascinating procedure acts like a natural time capsule preserving the original structure of organisms in a stony snapshot. When an organism has been buried, any voids can become filled with minerals and crystals. Minerals such as silica, calcite, and pyrite can precipitate from the surrounding groundwater and occupy the empty spaces. This process can occur in very small spaces, such as within the cell wall of a plant cell. Small-scale permineralization can produce very detailed fossils under the right conditions. For permineralization to occur, the organism must become covered by sediment soon after death, otherwise the remains are destroyed by scavengers or decomposition. The degree to which the remains are decayed when covered determines the later details of the fossil. Permineralization is akin to a microscopic sculptor, meticulously recreating every nook and cranny, every cellular detail of the original organism. It's thanks to this process that we often have such detailed fossil records of plants and animal hard parts. From the intricate patterns of ancient ferns to the complex structures of dinosaur bones, permineralization offers an intimate glimpse into the past. Through permineralization, we are granted an incredibly detailed view of organisms long vanished. Moving on to our second chapter, Casts and Molds. In some cases, the original remains of an organism can completely dissolve. The remaining organism-shaped hole is called an external mold. If these voids are then filled with sediments or minerals, then the resulting formation will resemble what the organism originally looked like, and these are called internal molds. A classic example of this type of fossilization are the dinosaur footprints seen on the Isle of Wight. Moving on to our third chapter, Orthogenic Mineralization. Orthogenic mineralization is a special form of cast and mold formation. If the chemistry is right, the organism can act as a nucleus for the precipitation of minerals, such as siderite, and can result in the formation of a nodule. If this happens rapidly, before significant decay to the organic tissue has occurred, then very fine three-dimensional detail can be preserved. The nodules from the Carboniferous Mason Creek fossil beds of Illinois, US are among the best documented examples of such mineralization. Next up, our third chapter, delving into the intriguing world of bioimmuration and bioturbation. Bioimmuration occurs when a skeletal organism overgrows or otherwise absorbs another organism, preserving the latter within the skeleton. Sometimes the bioimmured organisms are soft-bodied creatures that are then preserved in negative relief. Bioturbation, however, paints a different picture. It introduces us to organisms such as worms and clams, who are the architects of their own environment. They often bore or burrow through hard substrates. When these burrows and borings solidify, they provide a captivating window into the behavior and dietary patterns of the animals that made them. Thalassinoids, U-shaped fossil worm burrows, are common examples of these types of fossilization. Now, let's dive into our fourth chapter, replacement and recrystallization. Replacement occurs when the shell, bone, or other tissues are replaced with other minerals. In some cases, mineral replacement occurs so gradually and at such fine detail that microstructural features are preserved. Recrystallization is when the original skeletal compounds are still present but in a different crystal form, such as aragonite to calcite. Replacement and recrystallization 
is a method that delivers impressively detailed fossils, varying from the smallest shell to the largest dinosaur bone. Now, let's dive into our sixth chapter, Adpression. Envision a leaf or an insect descending onto a soft layer of mud or clay. It leaves behind an imprint, which is then conserved when fresh layers of sediment envelop and compact it. This is termed as adpression, a preservation technique especially crucial for capturing the exquisite details of fragile organisms, such as plants and insects. It's akin to nature's method of flower pressing, safeguarding them for millions of years. These processes afford us an insight into the delicate and complex organisms that once inhabited our planet. Our seventh chapter brings us to soft tissue preservation. Soft tissue cell and molecular preservation is a process that allows the soft tissues of organisms to remain intact. Although such preservation is rare event in the fossil record, soft tissues are usually the first elements to be broken down right after an organism's death. However, under special specific conditions, such as very rapid burial in very fine sediments, can allow these to be preserved. This offers us a unique insight into the biology of ancient organisms that we would not otherwise see. Imagine discovering the preserved skin of a dinosaur, or the feathers of a bird that took flight millions of years ago. Such finds provide priceless insights into the appearance, growth and behavior patterns of these ancient life forms. Moving on, we explore carbonization and coelification. These are transformative processes turning plant remains into coal over millions of years. The plant matter goes through chemical alterations due to heat and pressure, gradually changing into peat, then lignite, and ultimately coal. Coal can retain impressions of the plant, its structure, and its organic compounds, and serve as a window to the past. Teleporting us back to ancient forests and swamps, a world quite distinct from today's reality. Through these processes, even the softest tissues and plant remains can leave a lasting mark. So, there we have it, the magical different processes of fossilization. We've journeyed through the intricate and fascinating processes that allow us to peek into the history of life on our planet. Each of these processes contribute to the formation of fossils, which themselves are tangible records of the past. They provide us with invaluable information about the organisms that once roamed our planet, their environment and about the evolution of life itself. Understanding fossilization is like holding a key to the vast and mysterious vault of the Earth's history. This is only the beginning. Our exploration into the world of fossils is far from over. There are still many more chapters to unfold in our Fossil Fundamentals web series. Each episode is a new adventure, a new discovery, a new piece of the puzzle that is our planet's past. Check out our next episodes by liking, subscribing to our channel. Join us next time as we continue to explore Fossil Fundamentals.